For the fourth part of our analysis, we look at the separation of policies between academic freedom and harassment and discrimination. The reason we included this report of comparison is because we found during research that there is sometimes an overlap between academic freedom and harassment and discrimination, and that sometimes the policies for the two are not distinctly separated. For example, that they are included in a single article or policy section together and can be mistaken for the same topic. So we are concerned with whether academic freedom is distinguished or explicit from harassment and discrimination. Let's go on to the first slide. We divided regions into East and West and also by language and look for the trend and difference between universities in this area of analysis. Here's a graph illustrating the separation of harassment and discrimination across various areas. We can see that compared to Eastern and Central English speaking universities, um, French universities and Western English speaking universities usually don't put harassment and discrimination together with academic freedom. We also see a clear trend that Canadian universities usually distinguish between the two concepts that that while nine universities don't mention the two together, only two of the 23 don't separate or distinguish harassment and discrimination from their policies on academic freedom, and the two being University of Toronto and Western University. And let's look at the next slide. So in our results, we find that Central and Eastern English speaking universities mostly mention and separate harassment and discrimination from academic freedom within the faculty collective agreement. University of Winnipeg is a paradigm that uses different articles to separate the two concepts. And at the opposite end, we have Western University, which gives no mention of harassment and discrimination policies and does not give any statements distinguishing academic freedom. And the University of Toronto mentions harassment and discrimination in its freedom of speech statement, but does not provide explicit separations from academic freedom. And these two can be seen as outliers in our analysis. Crossing over to the French speaking regions, we find that French speaking universities usually have entirely separate documents for policies on harassment and discrimination. And because of this, they typically don't confuse harassment and discrimination with academic freedom. Western English universities are similar in that they distinguish the two concepts, but usually don't put them together. While the National University of CAUT is more similar to the Eastern English universities in that they both include the two concepts together and provide uh, distinctions to separate the two. Generally, we think that harassment and discrimination is separated from academic freedom and not a problematic factor for academic freedom. 